Okay, good morning. I am going to try to, I'm still kind of organizing myself here, get the microphone cord out of the way, Eller. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you guys how to sew in the wig clips. I know I made the video the other day of a wig clip and what they are for, how awesome they are for head coverings. I'm going to show you a few of them here. I got them out. Hopefully you can see. I got this all tripoded up. So these are the small ones and you can see better the little piece of rubber that's on this. That I think is the one that came from Sally Beauty. And it's probably one of the oldest ones I have. Let me put that back behind there. So hopefully you can see they pop open. And then like that. These are the small, I believe. They could be medium, but I think they were the small. These are the larger ones. A little bit bigger, a little more calm, but as you can see, they're not huge either. There's not a mass amount of difference. And the rubber strip on them, I'm trying to keep it framed up, sorry, goes diagonal, but it kind of just grips down on the hair, and then they stay really, really strongly into the hair. But whichever style you choose, these are the ones I hate. I do not like how the teeth on these are. Let's see, can you see? They're not really teeth, they're like a little weird zigzag accordion thing and I just, they will work. They're better than no wig clip, but I don't like them. They are not my first choice. So I advise avoiding these. But they do have the rubber strip on there too. So again, not the end of the world, I just don't like them. The reason why I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of get your hair caught on the back side of that. And it's just not a pleasant thing. These are much easier to have your hair catch on them. So I don't advise buying these. But these, I'm going to show you how to sew one of these on to this very, very old, very beat up veil. I just grabbed the first thing I've seen. This one like is a good example of what happens to a veil after many, many years. This is what bobby pins will do to your veils. Eventually, even a coated bobby pin will leave rust spots, and that's kind of what's happened there on this one. This is one of my old ones. Can you see? Um, in case you can't tell, I'm having a little trouble seeing the screen too, because I've got it angled so down on my hands. I kind of have to peek up and under it. Anyway, but that's what bobby, t bobby pins will do after a lot of wearing of the same veil in the same spots and that's one thing you get to avoid with wig clips because they don't really do that and if they're going to do it they're going to do it to the underside rather than the top side this particular veil is old beat up raveled and i don't know why when it was made years ago the edge was never finished you know i'm the one that made it but i, I don't know why i never surged that that raveled and it was just very well used very beat up what we're going to do is we're going to sew them in in the way I tackle this. So this may take us a little bit here, but I don't think it'll take too crazy long. Let me re-angle the camera a little. I want to use the layout. What I do, it's the, probably the trickiest thing about this is figuring out, okay, well, where am I going to put my little clips? So let's, for example, use these two small ones that I have laying here. You want to open them up because you want to make sure you sew them on the right way. Because obviously you don't want them with the teeth down. You want them with the teeth up so they can catch your hair. This right here, like is the seam for the top middle. That would go the very tippy top middle of my head. And usually a couple inches over from the top middle is where I would place one. And then a couple min inches over from the top middle is where I would place the other. And you, of course you want them angled that way so they can grab your hair. Tilting them a little bit is usually a good thing too. So that's kind of what I do for placement and this will obviously vary depending on the type of veil you're putting them into. I recommend getting a wig clip that will match your hair. Like I totally will sew brown into a white veil and the reason why is these match my hair. You're never going to see them once they're on. You see them holding the veil up but you don't see them once they're on my head because my hair is very dark. If you have white or a light gray hair, you're going to want a whiter, lighter clip. 
And if you get them to match your hair, then you're good to go. It's much easier to find the brown and the black. I wear brown or black because my hair is very dark. But as you well know, <laughs> but I wear brown or black. Ah! Okay, we have to. We had a little camera, the tri little mini tripod crashed over on top of everything, so I have to. I have to edit the video. <laughs> But if the camera angle changed, which I'm sure it did, that is why. So I was in the middle of saying, I think that basically brown or black for a dark haired person will work fine. And if you are a light haired person, either like a light blonde or you have gray or white hair, you wanna get a much lighter clip. So get them to match your hair. Um, of course, we already went through placement. The next thing, obviously you're gonna need some thread and a needle. My needles here. See my little needle book my mama made me? Isn't that cute? Um, my needles here are, there's one that's kind of a little bit bigger. I would show you, but it's a wing needle. Wing needles will actually kind of cut and make holes in the fabric. I don't know if you, you probably totally can't see that. They have a little piece on them a little wing literally and that actually kind of makes a little pinhole in the fabric and I really don't want that so my little stash of embroidery needles is somewhere else in the house and I didn't want to go digging them out the two the main needles I have right here this is a basic hand needle and those are quilting needles or quilting betweens as they're called they're really tiny really tiny holes but they also do glide through things easier a basic average needle like this is a darning needle but it has a dull point you really don't want that for this kind of job but just get a basic hand needle you can find them like at Walmart or Joann's or Hobby Lobby wherever you're going basic hand needle and even better I kind of like embroidery needles because embroidery needles have a bigger eye they're a little bit easier to thread but I'm going to use this basic little small hand needle it's not as big as I would like for this video but it should work it's of course not about the needle here um, it's going to be about getting this sewed on get you a length of thread um, you don't need a whole lot I'm just estimating and then go ahead and thread your needle hopefully this won't take me a long time I do find the older I get the more I struggle with this it was never a problem before of course it could help if I actually wore my glasses but <laughs> thread your needle and I tend to do something called a quilting knot but it's a little more tricky to teach so I'm not going to show that all you have to do is get this line it up so your ends are together and I'm using a blazingly bright blue thread and I'm doing that for the reason you would never use that sewing this clip on I'm just doing it so you can see it on the video um, normally you would match your thread to your veil whatever veil you're using you don't want to use a dark thread if you've got a white covering you want it to be white or as close to that as what you have so you have these two ends of the thread brought together and you just need to tie a knot and you can just do a basic little loop and pull it through hopefully you can see what I'm doing but I think that part it will be pretty easy for you you just tie a little simple knot get it as close to the end as possible you won't get it perfectly to the end doing this method I, the quilting knot you do you get it at the very end but that's a little more complicated to teach so I'm not going to do that one this is what I learned to do as a kid some people sew with a single thread and they only knot one end of this but I knot them both together for this you want the double it stays on better and for longer and is less likely to pop off and break um, that said the breaking I recommend if you have a head covering that you really don't machine wash it that you hand wash them um, you can I was just telling a friend yesterday you can pop these in the washer but if you do make sure the clip is closed so it can't snag anything and a, a mesh bag or something like that would probably protect your covering good if you really want to put them in the washing machine though in general hand washing will make them last longer but usually if you've sewn this on good with your hand sewing and you've got a good knot in it you're double threaded like that it's really one thread bent over twice but you know if you've got it like that you're probably going to have your clip stay on for a very long time so once you get your little knot in there just take and trim up to the end trim off the excess you want close to the knot maybe 
an eighth of an inch away, but you don't want to trim the knot itself. But you just want that little tail that's small. And you're going to come down here and you're going to decide on your veil where you're going to put it. Okay, I usually go a couple inches away from the middle and then about an inch away from the bottom. You can go to the very edge, but the clip will kind of show. Th Sorry, you're not seeing. You can go to the very edge, but the clip, like if you put your clip all the way up here, it's probably going to peek through to the underside. And I just find they're not as comfortable all the way up at the tippy edge. But you can do what you want to do. Try it and then experiment what you like. I like it either half an inch or an inch away from the top edge. And that seems to be the happy place for me. So a couple inches over, eyeballed, you don't have to measure, a couple inches over and then an inch or so down from that top edge. And then lay it there flat. And again, make sure you got it on the right side so that when you open it up, the teeth can come into your hair. So you hold it, you're going to hold it down, but before you do that and take your first stitch, just come into the fabric. And like this fabric has a facing. I only want to catch this fabric. I don't want to catch this side. If your veil doesn't have a facing, it's going to be that much more important that you do this neatly and with a matching thread. You can do it, but you want to keep your stitches minimal and neat. Here, with this facing, it doesn't matter. I could do it as sloppy as I want to and no one's going to know except for all of YouTube. <laughs> but go ahead and you can push your clip to the side, go down and then up and catch the fabric to take your first stitch. And then go ahead and bring your needle where you got a little bit more and then take your clip in through one of the holes. You can see on this clip there's multiple holes and it doesn't really matter which one you catch as long as you're not catching over here in the teeth area. I start off just with the little one on the end and you don't have to do this super neat. The neater you do, it's awesome for learning, but you reach under here and then you get it and you hold it down. Now that you've got it in there and you've made the first stitch in and you're hooking it in, I come back down and then come back up through the hole of the clip. And now I'm getting it on there a little tighter and I'll make two or three little tacks. And I try to put the needle in a very close spot as the other one for as neat as possible and kind of cluster it closely together. And then you can come up a little bit, catch the next hole. You go in through the bottom and then out through the top. On the fabric, in through the bottom of the clip, out through the top. And one danger is your little thread loop can kind of come over here and catch on the teeth. So you kind of want to keep it to the side as you do it. It'll stitch two or three times. Catch the top hole there, stitch it a couple times. Now depending on the design of your clip, some of these clips have holes across the top and you can just work your way around the top and then down this other side. But this one doesn't. Like this clip here, the big clip, it's got the holes in the top. I can come up this side, come across the top and down the bottom and I can do it all in the same length of thread. This one does not. You have one of two options that I can see. You can go ahead and knot it off or you can kind of come around here along the top and catch in between the teeth. Um, honestly, whichever way you do it doesn't matter when you're working with the facing. It's a little bit gonna, it's gonna be more messy if you come across the top catching in between the teeth and doing a stitch in between there. It's gonna be messy on the other side. But with the facing, it doesn't really matter with most clips though, I'm going to recommend that you just go ahead and knot it off right here. Um, I think you're going to end up with just as strong of the clip either way. It's going to be on just as strongly, I mean. So let's come around here. Let me slow down what I'm doing. So you take your thread. Let me move this into position better. Take your thread. And we need to create a knot. So I kind of wrap it around my hand and make a loop and bring it back in. So I'm knotting around and I've got my loop my knot there and I try to bring it down so the base of that knot is down near the fabric catch it with your finger 
and all you're doing is basically tying off that thread and then I do it again for good measure all you're doing is knotting that thread so it's nothing fancy or complicated make sure it doesn't catch the teeth but if you hold your finger down there on that thread you'll force the base of that knot to be there right beside the clip and then you can clip it off I don't know if you can see but my little knot is basically right there so all I did was I knotted that off I'm going to snip it and then I can stitch the other side I don't know if I caught all that on camera but hopefully I caught enough now I can just stitch the other side and I'll do that real quick again just knotting toward the end Oops, sometimes you can push your knot right off the end if you're not careful and then you have to do it again but I got a knot there in the end I'm going to trim the tail your little tail's going to go everywhere get it on the table there so this time I'm going to turn upside down because I'm right handed and I need this side that I'm working with to be on my right side it's just the way I am oh it helps if you put your hand under catching the facing if you have a facing so I catch the fabric and then I'm going to come up through the hole and you want like your th your thread sometimes will loop but if you take it with your fingernails you can pull it evenly through and then come up pull it even to get your needle and your thread to come up as they should because you want them to stay even and as neat as possible if you leave loops behind loops are likely to get caught break and then if the thread breaks then your whole clips gonna come off just like with the other side I'm coming up through the bottom out through the top and I'm gonna move to the second hole again I kind of need to do that it created a little loop there so I take my fingernail and pull till that evens up and sometimes if you have a rougher thread you may have to do that a couple times to get it to neaten up there the neater and kind of tighter that stitch can be the better and I think this time I'm probably like doing three times per hole it really doesn't matter I mean you can stitch one time per hole or you can loop it two or three times because this particular veil has the facing and my stitches are going to be hidden I don't care you may want to err if you're on a single side veil and your stitches are going to show you may want to err on doing a few less stitches and maybe needing to restitch it later so the stitches don't show um, I'm ready to tie this off again hopefully you can see I'm going to loop it around my hand or my fingers or something just make a big giant loop back through that get the knot to form take your finger and push that knot down put your nail, kind of nail onto that clip and pull it through that one knot's formed here goes the second and then now you can snip it and that can come off I got a little tail left up so I need to trim a little closer I should have gotten my small scissors instead of my giant ones but now your your clip is sewn on and all you have to do is pop it on to put it on your hair and then pop it closed when you get it on your head or if you're going to wash it um, then I recommend keeping it closed but there's your wig clip sewn on um, for good measure if you you know if you are got it down then you're probably done with the video at this point that's fine I'm going to sew on this big one too so you can see that and you can see the process I'm going all the way around since the big one has more holes um, I think I have enough thread here you could err on the side of caution and go ahead and change your thread but I'm gonna risk it I think I can do it I just probably won't loop the holes as many times now I'm gonna briefly I'm gonna be brave here I'm gonna show you the little quilting knot and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this but you can actually search this and learn on YouTube that's how I learned you put your needle down on top of it put your needle toward the end and then you wrap three or four times and then you kind of pull it tight you bring your thumb up over yeah, let me do it again here I'm doing it a little bit wrong I'm not used to doing it on camera okay there wrap through four times kind of bring your thumb up over it 
I am so not used to doing this on camera. It's what a hoot. Okay. I feel like I can do this now. <laughs> okay. And then you end up with your knot like that. Normally it doesn't take me two or three attempts. I think I just feel squirrely doing it on camera. Real life brain goof there. Um, I just feel turned around even though I'm really not. Watching myself on camera is not cool. Okay, so you're going to put this down again. You normally wouldn't size together two of these of different sizes like this, but you know, for the video it doesn't matter. I really don't wear this veil much anymore anyway. So you can go ahead and lay it on here or you can just move it aside for your first stitch. Um, whatever you like. I'm going to move it aside so you can see. Just going in, taking a small bit of the fabric. Bring your clip over. Catch the first. Oop, you know what? I'm going to move this down a little bit because I want to start. This is a good point. I want to start here. I started to start here. But if I start here, I can work up and then work around and then down. So kind of plan your stitches and you, that also plan your thread a little better. So I'll start like that. And then loop around. I am going to take an extra stitch there because that edge is the most important, I think. And then I'm going to start coming up to this next one. You kind of sometimes have to wiggle to get it to go in the right spot. And next, be sure that you keep your thread that way. That way you don't end up creating tangles and knots. I'm going to slide around here at the top. Now this is a bigger jump to make, but I do it. And the next one, tack in there. And the next. Turn it as you go to what's comfortable. Ow, don't stab yourself in the thumb like I just did. Look away for a second and the next thing you know. See, I'm doing this again because the, the thread's got a little loose and you don't want those hanging loose. You want them pretty snug against the clip. Catch this big one here. A little extra on that big riveted one because that's a good firm point to anchor. And then the last little hole there. And my thread kind of left a little loop there again. Okay, tight. And then the very last one I will probably take a couple little stitches. Ow. My thumb hurts. It's arthritic. <laughs> um, getting the last one in there. Okay, now time to knot this off. So I went all the way around, and you can see it just took, you know, a minute or two. Let's see, do this slow. Hold it out, loop around, go through the hole. You get it like this, and then put your finger down, pull. Do it again, loop around, however you like. Put your finger through and pull. Okay, we nip that off. Close, and then there you have a wig clip sewn on. And you can see that's the bigger version. And this is the smaller version. Different designs with the, the holes. Let's see if I can get where you can compare them here. Different ones with the holes, but you know, they're both fairly easy to sew on. Your back side, I'm seeing what my stitches look like here. This is what it would look like on the top. Of course, this is an old, very raveled, there's old interfacing that's coming off. So that's what your stitches might look like on the top side. That is with me not trying too crazy hard because I'm trying to do this on video, but you can make your stitches neater than this. And if you're doing it with the same color fabric, they're not gonna show. They're certainly not going to look any worse than bobby pins and big clips do that show. That's like what it would look like from the top side of your veil if this veil wasn't a faced veil. Because this itch doesn't show at all because this veil has a facing, which is nice. So it lets you hide the clip completely. You can't tell that there's a clip under there and your veil looks like it's held on with no clips at all which is kind of a neater look. I kind of like that not having all the clippies. But these really do help. You get a lot less hair breakage than with bobby pins especially. Bobby pins were shearing the heck out of my hair. Um, but these work good. 
they, I think it is probably a little easier if you do have a veil with a facing because then you're not trying to hide your stitches from the top. Um, but honestly, if you use a matching thread, you, that will blend in pretty good. It is much more important that you go slower and more careful and make your stitches as tiny as possible if you do have a single layer veil and your stitches are going to show. You just want to be as neat as possible and then you'll be a little bit more pleased with your work in the end. And of course, these I done these real fast for YouTube and I wasn't really concerned with keeping perfectly neat stitches because I know that they're not going to show on the facing side. And if you're new at that, don't let that worry you too much because again, if you're using the same color thread, you're really not going to see it. Someone's really going to have to look for it. So. Don't be afraid to try tacking on your own wig clips. It makes your head covering life a whole lot easier. So I hope this video has been helpful and that you guys are not afraid to tackle on sewing with your wig clips. If you have questions, please let me know. I'll link again today to the wig clips that I linked into the other day. And um, there was something else I was gonna link to. But anyway, check out the links and you can look online for those. And again, if you don't wanna get them online or buy them in bulk, it's usually cheaper online in bulk, but if you just want a few to try, then it becomes a little cheaper to go into a place like Sally Beauty and find them. So those are the places that you can get them from, but I will post links um, below. I think probably maybe some hand needles and thread and stuff like that so you can see the types of things I'm talking about. You certainly don't have to get them from Amazon, but you know, you can if you want. You can get Walmart or Joann's or Hobby Lobby or any type of store that sells basic sewing supplies. Obviously you need your pair of scissors. These are my sewing scissors. I'm very militant about protecting them for cloth and thread only. Can you tell? Yeah, you know, I'm a little crazy about it. I like my scissors. But often I will use small scissors for something like this. I just grab the first pair available. Um, and of course you need some type of thread. Matching thread is best. It doesn't matter if you're using polyester or cotton or whatever, just anything will work for this. This is a basic polyester thread. Um, I like these because they're kind of in between sewing machine and serger cone and I can use them on either one. It's nice. But anyway, I'll do links on the below um, so you can take a look and see what it is that you need to go and buy if you need to buy things at all. You may have most of the things that you need already at home other than the wig clips probably. So I hope this helps you guys. If you have questions or if I missed something important, which I probably did, let me know and I will try, try to do my best to answer them. Have an awesome day, guys.